Papa John's going to be paraphrased. They're going to come and they're going to wreck this place. Now, God's going to wreck this place through him, all right? And, and he's wanting to take us to another place. He's wanting us to really worship in the spirit and dig deeper and cry out with the right motives, all right? Don't just come to God saying, God, I want your blessings. God, I want you to fix my life. I want you to fix my problems. Some of y'all are just so focused on your problems and so focused on what the devil's doing that God can't do nothing in your life. He wants you to stop focusing. He wants you to go He wants you to center his attention. He wants you to focus on him. He wants you to, to, to give him your worship, all right? But the more you stop focusing on what he and what all the problems in the life, and the more you start focusing on the answer, the more the problems just fade away. The devil is a liar and a loser. Don't give him no attention. He gets too much credit, all right? The devil ain't still with whatever. You need to give your heart to the Lord and focus on Him, alright? Amen. Amen. I don't even know where I was at. Alright, what does it mean to worship in the truth? See, it's not just the spirit. You've got to worship in the truth as well. There's two sides of the coin. It's not just it's a lot of people got all spirit, but they ain't got no truth. Alright? And because of that, they're easily deceived by the enemy. What's the truth? Where do you find the truth? You find the truth in the written word of God. You find the truth in the commands of God. All right? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What does he mean? He says that he, he means that he is the person who lived out the example and followed the example of what living by the truth is really all about. The word of God. The commands of God. The heart of God. And it says this in Hosea, and listen, you can't worship in the truth unless the truth's in you. It's like you can't worship in the Spirit unless the Spirit's in you. All right? You've got to get the truth in you. And how do you get the truth in you? Not by letting it collect dust on your coffee table or collect dust on your bookshelf. You've got to pick up that word and you've got to crack it open and you've got to let it pour into you. All right? You've got to let it pour into you. Hosea 4 and 6 says this. My people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. He says my people are being destroyed just because they don't know the truth. Just because they don't know any better. They have lack of information. They don't know that I have a plan and a purpose for them. I got something that they need to be focused on, all right? I was out there killing myself on drugs and alcohol trying to find my purpose and acceptance in the world and peace and drugs and alcohol because I didn't know the truth that God had a plan for me, that God had something better for me. Alright? And he created me to be something better than that. I didn't know the truth, so I was killing myself. And so many people are killing themselves just because they act like an art. So many people in the church are allowing the thieves to still get on the story from their life because they don't know the truth about that certain area of their life. Alright? You don't know the truth about how your relationships are supposed to look. You can guarantee that they're going to show up wreak havoc in your relationship. You can be deceived about how you're supposed to operate in a relationship if you don't know the word of God about how you're supposed to operate. Listen, if you ain't got no word, in you, the spirit has nothing to grab hold of and work with in your life. It's like you got the job, but you ain't got the map. Come on. You need the word in your life. And I know you get the good word here on Sunday mornings and whenever else y'all have church, but listen, if you just do like one or two hours or four or five if it comes to Gary Church of God, all right? If you just do it that many hours in a week, but you're spending the rest of the time out in the world, what is going to go dominate in your life, all right? Come on, you got to crack that word open for yourself. you got to read it for yourself. you got to carve out time in your schedule and make time for the word of God. So you can worship according to the truth, so you can worship in the truth, not just in the spirit. If you've got all the spirit and no truth, the devil's going to be able to trick you. He's going to be able to lie to you because, listen, the devil knows scripture. All right? He spent to Jesus, but Jesus went through much scripture for the devil to trick him. All right? He worships according to the truth. He has the truth in him. And what did David say? Lord, I hide your word in my heart. Where at? Same place the spirit resides. It's a matter of the heart. All right? I have your word in my heart that I might not say anything. I don't hide your word in my back pocket. Alright? It doesn't say, you know, I don't have one to give you, but I was just sitting in my back pocket for a reason. I'm not saying you shouldn't carry one in your back pocket. You might should, but don't just ever leave it in your back pocket just for show, and so you can say you're a Christian, you carry your Bible, and you never read it, alright? I don't have to work in my heart, not on the coffee table, not on the bookshelf, alright? Not in the car, not in your way. you got to get it in you, alright? Let me just read that scripture real quick that David wrote. Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, it says, how can a young person stay pure? And listen, we're all young guys now, all right? Put it right there. Come on, man. 
Oh, you probably sent him a job. All right. In the scope of eternity, we're all young. All right. I don't care what my wife says. She thinks I'm getting old. But we're all young and God loves us. How can a young person say to her, by obeying your word? I have tried hard to find you, not let me wander from your command. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decree. I have recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in the riches. I, I will study your commands and reflect on your ways. He says, I'm going to study your word and reflect on what I've been reading. All right? He's making time to get the truth in him so he can worship in the truth. All right? I will study your commands and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. Amen. All right? He doesn't say nothing about the spirit right there. He's talking about the word. He's talking about the truth. All right? He says, I will recite it. Out loud, some of y'all just need to practice the word of God. You need to stand up on the mirror. I don't care how goofy you feel, you know, or what people might say about it. You need to stand up on the mirror and practice it. That way it's just not something you read with your eyes. It's something that's inside of you, right? right? Something that you can, something, because if God puts it in you, you're going to be able to bring it out to you when the human mother comes through and you need to make a decision and worship according to the truth out there in life, all right? Amen. Amen. Worship according to the truth. So you start to see, listen, <clears throat> James says this. If you got all the truth and no spirit, you'll just deceive yourself. Amen. All right, if you got all spirit and no truth, you're deceived by the enemy. If you got all truth and no spirit, you just deceive yourself. All right, how many of y'all know? Man, I know there's a lot of people. Maybe I even used to be like this before that. You know, I knew a whole lot of the word, but I wasn't allowing the spirit to reign in my life as well. I wasn't immersed in the spirit, and, and it's sad. It's just sad to see somebody who knows the word and can see how you know other people's lives don't line up with the word of God, but they won't let the Holy Spirit tell them how they don't line up with the word of God. All right? Come on, I know y'all know some people like that. All right. They can see how everybody else's life don't line up with the truth, but they can't see how their own life don't line up with the truth. It's because they got all truth but no spirit. Listen, the spirit didn't come into this world to give you life to be the spiritual police for everybody else. He's here to convict you and correct you. He's here to lead out and direct you. He's here to take the word that you're putting in you and, and use it as a map for you to live by. All right? You're going to worship the spirit and the truth. And James says this in James chapter 1, verse 22. He says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. All right? You got all the truth and no spirit to help you live it out. You know, you're only fooling yourself. So you start to see how the word and the spirit work together. The spirit and the truth work together inside your heart to clean you up. To get the motives of your heart right so you can be a true worshiper. So you can be a living sacrifice. So you're not coming to God bringing those dead sacrifices that He don't want anyway. You're coming with the wrong motives, just wanting the blessing and not the blessing. Just having the promises and not the promise. Listen, everybody that was caught up in the Spirit, they didn't just get taken to another place just to be taken to another place. God imparted something into them. Amen. To take back. All right? God imparted something into them that they could use. That it's something that, that was going to take them further in the ministry that God had for them. All right? But the thing about it wasn't that they had the right motives. They wasn't seeking God just for a blessing. They wasn't seeking God just for a promise. They was just seeking God because that's who they were. They were a worshiper. They said, I God, you know, if you don't ever do anything else for me, then you've already done too much. How many of y'all know that's true? If you don't ever do anything else for us, he's already done too much. Amen. All right? And we should just want to worship him because of that. We come with the right motive when we're not seeking with the wrong motive in our heart because the word and the spirit has cleaned up our heart. Then he wants to take us to another place. Then he can trust us to give us something from another world to bring back to this world. All right? Amen. 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 We need to get something from another world. And not just, I'm not talking about, you know, aliens and Mars and you know, I'm not talking about Pandora and, and Avatar, all right? I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. I'm talking about something that's really than me and you sitting here today, all right? I want to take you to another place. But you got to allow the Word and the Spirit to work together. The Bible says the Word and the Spirit agree. That means they work together to clean your heart up, to make you the worship you're, you're really meant to be. And here's a few things about a true worshiper. Here's a few things to give you to, to let you know if you're a true worshiper or not, all right? See, a surrendered heart of worship will always produce an action. You know, the very word worship, you know, there's four different Hebrew words that are translated to the word worship. 
And all of them have pretty much the same meaning. They mean to prostrate yourself before God, to bow down in a reverence and honor to God. All right? And that's an action. That means, God, I'm going to get humble. I'm going to get low. I'm going to act inferior to a superior because I know that you are superior and you don't need me. I need you. How many of y'all know that God don't need you to continue to be God? All right? He can be God all by himself. All right? 